While I was preparing dinner, I heard my husband's voice from the living room. Hey! Then, the sound of our son running. It seemed he was talking to our son, but it wasn't clear. Right. What's up? I responded to the voice. Polly turned off the TV. You left the remote on the floor, didn't you? I said to Evan. What, so it's my fault now? That's how the argument between us started. Things escalated from there. My name is Emily. I'm 29, working part-time. My husband, Evan, works for a major company and is five years older than me. We met at a party organized by a friend. After dating for two years, we got married. Evan was a bit passive, but we seemed to get along peacefully and had a good connection. We were blessed with a child, a son named Polly, now four years old. I took maternity leave when Polly was born, but now I'm back to working full-time. Honestly, handling household chores after a full day of work is tough, but I persevered for Polly. His smile is what keeps me going. I pack up at work, say goodbye to my boss, and head home. Today, I got a bit late. I hurried to the car and drove to pick up Polly from daycare. After parking, I rushed to the daycare classroom and found Polly playing with his teacher. Seeing me, he came over with a smile that melted away all my fatigue. I bid the teacher goodbye, and hand in hand with Polly, we smiled our way back to the car. Once home, the real rush begins. I have to start making dinner, jerks tail comb at last. I open the door with Polly and find shoes scattered all around. I titty them up and walk with Polly into the living room, where Evan is lying on the floor under the table, watching TV. You're home already? Yeah, just had meetings today. He replies without taking his eyes off the TV. Buff the then. I half sigh, half laugh at the sight of him. Hey, did you do any housework? Uh, no. He responds nonchalantly, prompting a sigh from me. But you said the one who gets home first would do it. There was nothing to do. I retort, a bit irritated. Of course there is. What about the laundry drying in the bathroom? Oh, right. His clueless tone exasperates me. It's not just that. He keeps laughing at the TV. Hopeless, he's not listening. I start preparing dinner. Hey! Then, after a moment of silence, Polly starts crying. What's wrong? Polly turned off the TV. He must have left the remote on the floor. If you left it on the floor, of course Polly would step on it. What, so it's my fault? Evan retorts, sounding annoyed. Well, it can't be helped, right? No need to yell. Whatever. Evan walks off to another room. Really? Who's the child here? I continue with dinner unbothered. Finally, dinner's ready, and I go to call Evan. Dinner's ready. Hey. No response. Is he ignoring me? That's what it seemed like. Then the door opens, and Evan comes out expressionless. He doesn't say a word to me. He just sits at the table and starts eating. Here we go again. I mutter to myself. Evan has this habit. When upset, he ignores people. It's really tiresome. I've been turning a blind eye, but it's honestly draining. I know it won't end unless I make the first move. Evan's just like that. Unaware, our son Polly says, let's eat. He starts eating the curry I made. Curry's yummy, he says with a smile. It is, isn't it? I can't help but smell bad. Hey, daddy. Polly tries to talk to Evan. Evan doesn't respond at all. Unbelievably, he's even ignoring our son. Polly, I'm irritated but don't want to fight in front of Polly, so I hold back. Daddy's just thinking about work right now. That's right. Polly starts eating again, seemingly unbothered. There's more if you want seconds. Okay. Watching Polly's carefree smile is reassuring. I wonder if Evan remembers our plan to go to the aquarium the day after tomorrow. I'm really worried about it, but since we can't talk, there's no way to confirm. Feeling anxious, I decided to go to bed as I was tired today. But the next day, Evan continued to ignore me. In the morning, he got up and left the room without a word, passing by me with a blank face. The air was tense from the start. It was a terrible morning. This situation always drags on. I could apologize to make him feel better, but I don't think I did anything wrong this time. I can't bring myself to apologize for something like that. It's unreasonable to take it out on Polly, even if it's his own fault. If I apologize now, I'll just end up bobbling up my stress until I explode. Then Polly ran up and hugged Evan. And Evan said, you stink. Don't talk to me. Stink? Who does? It's Polly. He's had an accident again. I thought it couldn't be true since Polly sleeps with me, but there was a smell. Oh, when did this happen? I changed Polly's clothes, but Evan shouting at Polly showed he was still in a bad mood. Evan rarely shouts, 
so I knew this wasn't a good sign. Evan got dressed and left for work. Tomorrow is the day we've promised to go to the aquarium as a family. I tried to forget about Evan's mood and prepared for the aquarium trip. I wondered when Evan would come home today. That's what I was thinking. I decided to use the shark backpack with a zipper we bought at the aquarium last time for Polly's bag. This is your bag. Polly. Yay! It's cool! I'm shy! Polly's smile with the backpack on his back made me smile too. We were happily preparing. Still, there was no word from Evan. As night fell, he neither called nor came home. Let's eat dinner. And Polly, Daddy won't be back for a while. And go on the Tirati! First We ate dinner without Evan. As to my aquarium day, Fritz discuss, for cluttering the Bart Marble and Britney. Polly said with a smile. Yes, it is. I smiled back. Honestly, I didn't know what to do anymore, so I decided we'd go out just the two of us. Polly, let's go to the aquarium just us tomorrow. About that, Daddy! Polly looked puzzled. Daddy seems to be busy with work. Oh, I see! It just probs! I keep- Us with no contact from Evan, I couldn't wait any longer and decided it was best to go just the two of us. Besides, I didn't even know if he remembered our promise. So, I made up my mind to go alone. I didn't want to go out with someone who ignored me. It would be fun with just the two of us. I thought, Daddy's mad about something, huh? Polly seemed to sense something. The me. I don't understand. Maybe he's just tired. Let's just go by ourselves tomorrow. It's not that you. I'm excited. Polly seemed happy, and I felt a bit relieved. We finished dinner and were getting ready for bed when a message came on my phone. One penny per character? I was taken aback. It was a message from Evan. Just one penny per character. I didn't understand but replied, What are you talking about? By the way, Polly and I are going to the aquarium alone tomorrow. 25 characters, 25 cents. Can that be settled in dollar increments? I'm coming home now. Coming home? I saw it. The door opened. I stepped out in my pajamas to see Eben. He staggered into the living room and fell asleep on the sofa. My anger was beyond control. I felt I'd reached my limit. Despite telling him about the aquarium tomorrow, he was out drinking with a woman without any contact. I couldn't contain my anger as I thought about it. I decided to leave this house. That's what I decided. I couldn't believe he asked for money and then sent a picture from a party. It felt almost like infidelity. That's what I thought. I left Evan as he was and went to my room to pack my things. After packing, I called my friend Wendy, who lives on the floor below. I can I stay over tonight. Oh, Larry, none. At this hour? It's okay, though. Thank you. I carefully wrapped sleeping Polly in a blanket, grabbed our things for tomorrow, and left the room. Um, I glanced at Evan and saw a shocking sight. For some reason, I took a photo of it. Then, carrying Polly, I quietly opened and closed the door to avoid making noise. I went downstairs and rang Wendy's doorbell. Wendy looked surprised when she opened the door. What happened? I saw I the lot has happened. Can Polly sleep first? And he laid out a fountain in one of the rooms for Polly. What's going on? I told her about Evan always ignoring me, asking for money, and sending a party photo. Sure, a party? Yeah, it makes no sense, right? I was confused as I talked. It really doesn't. Wendy looked puzzled. I feel like having a drink. I can't sleep, but tomorrow I'm going to the aquarium with Polly, so just one. Going to the aquarium? Okay, I understand. Wendy got a beer from the fridge and opened it for me. The dang things, is pressed. Sure. I drank one can and fell asleep while venting. Wendy woke me up early in the morning. She had covered me with a blanket and let me sleep on the futon after I had fallen asleep. Hey, top run! I didn't realize I had fallen asleep. Like, Akers and I. Like, I saw the Pujan, the Chkerbodera Zazus. I felt well rested. Maybe because I got all my complaints out. Hey, can I use your shower? Of course. I quickly showered and changed into the clothes I brought. I glanced at the clock. It was about time for Polly to wake up, so I hurried. After getting dressed, Tully woke up. He was surprised at first, but then smiled when he saw Wendy. Hey, it's Wendy. Long time, no see. Please, Polly. Their conversation was comforting.
I can go to the aquarium with you and your mom today. Wendy gave me a knowing look. Really? Fine. I felt relieved that Wendy would be joining us. We got ready and arrived at the aquarium. Polly was very excited. Polly and Wendy ran ahead into the aquarium. Having Wendy, there was truly a relief. She took care of Polly, allowing me to just watch them from behind. Since at the interactive section, Polly and Wendy laughed and had fun. After this section, Polly ran off to a tank. I said to Wendy, thank you, Wendy. Seeing my expression, Wendy replied, it must have been tough. Don't worry, I'm having fun. Her words made my emotions well up. Yes, I had been through a lot, but tears welled up in my eyes. The day was wonderful. It felt like the first free day in a long time. We had a great day, forgetting about reality. We ate lunch at the aquarium, had dinner on the way back, and returned to Wendy's place. Polly fell asleep immediately. He must have been exhausted. That night, we stayed at Wendy's place again. Sorry for staying again. Sure, that's fine. I was really grateful to Wendy. Then, how about we try the new drink at the cafe tomorrow? Oh, they have a new one. I hadn't enjoyed a cafe visit in a while. Yeah, I've tried it once. It's delicious. Wow, let's go. Tnadi, shows that. Fix in this comfortable space. I completely forgotten about Evan. The next morning, the three of us went to the cafe, ordered the new drink, and had a pleasant chat. Holly couldn't sit still for long, so we soon headed back to Wendy's place. I realized I could have fun even without Evan. That's what I was thinking. While eating cookies at Wendy's, the doorbell rang. Who could it be? Evan, maybe? I felt a bit tense. I check. I'll check. Can we count about your term? I told Wendy and looked at the doorbell camera. As expected, Evan was standing there. I slowly opened the door. Evan was standing there arrogantly and screamed at me. Said you were here after all. Don't just leave without saying anything. He was furious. Were you kidding me? No food at home and I can't reach you on your phone. He was ranting with an angry expression. His words about the phone made me furious. Boy, what about when you're talking nonsense like charging a penny per character? I faced Evan squarely and said, it's not my fault. Why are you acting like the victim? Evan looked around, surprised. I had blocked all notifications from Evan. I even set my phone not to ring for his calls. I completely forgotten about him while having fun with Wendy. Hearing the commotion, the knee came out. I gestured to her that I was okay and tried to keep her from coming closer, but I could feel Wendy's presence behind me. I told Evan, it's your fault, isn't it? You blame Polly for your mistakes, and when I pointed out, you start ignoring me. Evan looked at me astonished. She's stunned, and for anybody was dead. And then the first thing you say after all this time is about charging per character. Don't joke around. Evan started to argue. That's because you get mad over unreasonable things. Was being unreasonable. Of course Polly will step on a remote if you leave it on the floor. A left for racer was all. Evan started to quiet down. I'm ignoring Polly too. Because Polly turned off the TV? I felt my face getting hot. So how many times do I have to tell you? It's your fault and you ignored him because he turned it off. I was speaking with intense emotion. Yeah. Don't be absurd. How old do you think Polly is? Evan, overwhelmed by my accusations, had nothing to say. Who's the child here? <laughs> There's little bath there. Ignoring someone when you don't like something. Daddy don't like something. And yes, what about this picture? Oh my. I took out my phone and showed even the party picture. Evan looked pale. That guy sent it, didn't he? Later I found out it wasn't Evan who sent the picture, but one of his friends. It was an unfortunate picture for Evan, undoubtedly. What's this all about? I'm sorry. I demanded an answer. I made up my mind and told Evan, I'm divorcing you. I can't deal with you anymore. No, no, that's an overreaction. Evan was shocked and panicky. This is infidelity. I can't stay with someone like that. It's not infidelity. That's exaggerating. Evan was in a state of shock. I showed another photo on my phone. It was a picture of Evan sleeping in the living room after he returned home nonchalantly following the party. Incredibly, Evan had wet himself. I captured this shocking moment in the photo. I showed Wendy the photo. Wendy looked bewildered. Hey, stop it. Stop it. Evan was panicking. 
Also, maybe it's just me, but the other day when you yelled at Polly for smelling, that was you, wasn't it? Evan looked caught off guard. What? That day, Evan had woken up staggering. I found a lot alcohol cans in the room and realized he'd been drinking heavily. And probably, he was the one who had an accident, not Polly. Polly hadn't wet himself that day. I sighed, then told Wendy, I don't think I can be with him anymore. That Annie came with free. Undy. Uh oh, Dixon. Evan was stuttering, unable to find words. Then Polly came over. Daddy? Hey, Tay Polly. As Polly approached innocently, Polly, let's go wash your face first. Undy took him away. Evan started, I'm sorry. I'm tired from working everything. I apologize. That party picture, that wasn't me. I didn't know anything about it. He was clearly lying, aren't you? That's different. Really? I'm sorry for ignoring you and the money thing. The fan begging began to cry in front of me. I'll say it again. I can't do this anymore. Please, let's divorce. Goodbye. I slammed the door. I ignored Evan shouting outside. It faded away, and everything was quiet. I felt so relieved after saying what I wanted. Back in the room, Bendy asked, Are you okay with that? Yes, I feel relieved, I replied. Later, the divorce was finalized through a lawyer. I heard Evan had boasted. I have my wife under my thumb. She loves me so much she won't mind this photo. At the party, his friends tried to stop him, but he was too drunk. The rumor of our divorce spread in his company, and everyone seemed to agree it was justified. Poor Miam. He must be uncomfortable at work. Well, it's only natural for ignoring someone for such a reason. He always made me feel lonely. No one would understand such behavior. I was worried about managing alone with Polly after the divorce, but now my parents come over and help. They visit almost every day, which is a big relief. My parents say, we enjoy it, so it's fine. Polly is happy being with them, always smiling. Leaving him was the right choice. I couldn't relax with him around, felt like I wasn't even home. Honestly, his ignoring had happened before. I've reached my limit. Deciding to divorce was the right decision. Life is manageable now. I'm determined to do my best for Polly's smile. With that resolve, I had to work with a smile.